Okay, welcome everyone. This is the Certificate in Open Education Librarianship Information Session for the 2025 cohort. I think it's our seventh iteration, sixth, seventh? I don't know, I should really figure that out. Um, but we've been doing it uh, for a while. Uh, forgive me, I'm gonna be admitting um, while I'm speaking, um, but we're glad you're here um, from wherever you're coming from. Uh, feel free if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat and where you're from. I um, am presenting to you from the unceded Dakota lands here in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, where it's gorgeous and very fall-like. So that kind of makes me happy, makes my husband happy because it means football is occurring. It makes me happy because I'm loving the weather. So welcome everyone. Thank you for um, for attending this session today. Um, we will make sure that we have enough time to answer your questions. Um, but today I'll do a little intro about OEN. Uh, we'll talk about the different components of the program. Um, sorry, I'm admitting people as I'm speaking and I'm not a great multitasker in these situations. Uh, so welcome everybody who's still showing up. Um, I will be talking about OEN, uh, some different components of the um, program itself, uh, then uh, introducing to you the instructors this year. Um, I think all except one um, is an alumnus of the program, I think. Um, and the one who isn't is one of the creators. So we like to hire in-house if we can. Um, and then you're going to hear a couple um, uh, or a few alumni testimonials, and then we'll make sure that there's time for questions. Uh, we're not a super formal bunch around here, so if you have a question, feel free to pop it in the chat or if you'd like to unmute. I think it's a small enough group right now that that would be fine. I just want to make sure that you leave today with your questions answered. Okay, so who are we? Well, um, we are not a vendor. Uh, we're a network, a diverse network of higher ed institutions working together to make higher ed more affordable, equitable, and accessible. We represent now over 1,800 member campuses around the United States, Canada, Australia, and the United Kingdom who strive to make open ed, uh, higher ed more open. Specifically, the OEN is focused on action that advances open education in ways that are shareable, collaborative, and sustainable. And we do this by sharing the experiences and the expertise of our really fabulous community in ways to support our members. As a community, we're working together to help everyone in higher ed. The best example of our efforts to support the common good is the Open Textbook Library, anybody could pop that link in the chat, I'd so appreciate it. A comprehensive library of open textbooks reviewed by faculty that make open textbooks freely available to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Um, ultimately though, we're thinking of and trying to address something much bigger, and that is the advancement of educational equity through resources and practices that are more affordable, accessible, and exclusive. Thank you, Gabby. Um, and this, this program is one of the ways that we do that. So the Certificate in Open Education Librarianship is a professional development program that creates effective education uh, program, open education program leaders who want to be stewards and advocates for open educational resources and open educational practices. Uh, it was originally funded by a Laura Bush 21st Century Librarian Program Grant from IMLS in 2018. It is for librarians. Um, we occasionally do make exceptions for librarian adjacent roles. Um, in case anyone's going to ask, if you're not an employed librarian right now, but you're looking for a job, that does not disqualify you. Um, so you can still, uh, still apply. It is indeed entering its seventh cohort. Uh, this program offers formal training, um, a community of peers, expert mentors. It seeks to build sustainable, collaborative, and effective open ed programs. And we've estimated the time. And now that we've done it, you know, six times, it, I think we're, we feel pretty good about this time commitment of four to six hours per week. Um, if you're, you know, a uh, uh, a much slower reader, then it might take you a little bit more than that. 
some program um, stats for you. Since 2019, more than 300 higher ed librarians across the country have earned this certificate. Here's what alumni had to say in a survey conducted actually last year, because I haven't quite done this one. 100% rated the quality of the program as good or excellent. 98% would recommend it to others. 89% have implemented some or all of the action plans that they created during the duration of this program. And 94% uh, now say that they are more confident in their ability to grow open ed at their institution, which of course is what we are hoping for. So what are the program components? Uh, we start out with a 10-week online course uh, to establish kind of the foundations of what we're talking about and to help you all with the components of the action, the very customized action plan you'll be creating to promote and grow open ed on your campus. Um, this online course begins in early February of 2025. Um, and then there are five months of monthly synchronous cohort meetings running through September of 2025. Um, and the culminating project that I've already described briefly is an action plan that is customized to your institutional needs. Um, okay, the learning outcomes. Um, you uh, will gain fluency in defining open education. You will identify local collaborations and alliances to be made. You will design and build sustainable programming. You will develop strategies for measuring and articulating the impact of open ed. And you will connect and collaborate with librarians dedicated to developing open ed initiatives across the, the country and perhaps world. Uh, here are the program costs. They are now up on the website as well. OEN member institutions, um, pay 760, consortial institutions are 1050, non-members pay 1330, and there is financial assistance available. Um, librarians who need financial assistance will be asked to submit a letter of support explaining the financial need from a colleague or supervisor. The program cost then uh, would be $420. But then there's also full scholarships available for BIPOC librarians. Um, and this is directly in an effort to address the shortage of librarians of color. Uh, and those librarians do not need to submit a letter of reference. They simply need to indicate that they are applying for this particular scholarship. Um, some of the benefits, but surely uh, not all of them. Uh-oh, I sorry, I did not put that that particular slide up on the screen that indeed we are giving full scholarships to BIPOC uh, librarians who are interested in, um, in, in or need that. Some of the benefits of participating in this program, and I'm sure this is not a comprehensive list, but we again and again hear about the connections with librarians from all over the nation and world. Uh, People really like the action plan that provides a robust template of next steps. Uh, we give examples, best practices, and resources in a course shell that is updated every year. Uh, there is a professional, oh gosh. I'm just waiting a second as people who are in the waiting room uh, join us. Welcome to the, uh, to the newcomers. Um, we are talking about benefits and we just covered cost. If anyone would like me to repeat something, I'm happy to go back. Um, but the benefits, connections with the librarians all over the nation and world, action plan that provides a robust template, examples, best practices and resources in a course shell that's updated every year. <clears throat> Pardon me. There's a professional certificate earned. Uh, you get to attend the Library Copyright Institute um, as led by Will Cross and friends uh, for free that they put on um, just for this program. Um, and as of this next offering, 2025, um, you also will have um, 50 CEUs or credit hour units um, on that digital certificate because we've been asked uh, um, a handful of times over the years can you give CEUs? So the answer is yes. 
um, and that is directly from the University of Minnesota. So let's say you're interested, <clears throat> but you want to know how do I apply? What does it involve? How competitive is it? <clears throat> you will be answering questions about your role in institution. You will be asked to uh, upload a resume or CV. You'll want to reflect engagement or interest in open ed and or interest in experience in working with faculty, programs, <clears throat> and camp campus stakeholders. You'll want to demonstrate the potential to impact or move forward open initiatives. Does it mean you have to be an OER librarian, just that you have a role in this? <clears throat> and then you will be asked to reflect upon how your participation in this program may positively impact diversity, equity, and inclusion at your institution. Um, and in, in terms of, because I always get this question every year, so how competitive, how competitive is it? We admit a max of 64 librarians to the program. Every year we get between 75 and 85 applications. So I would say, to be honest with you, it's not terribly competitive. Most of the people who apply actually get in the program, which works out great for us. We are happy to, um, to be that accommodating. Here are the fabulous instructors uh, whom I really enjoy working with. Uh, Cheryl Casey from University of Arizona, <clears throat> one of the very original creators of the program, a longtime instructor. Kathy S. Miller, um, who's a longtime member of our OEN community, but who's never instructed for us before. Mandy Goodset <clears throat> from the, uh, oh no, that's the Ohio, sorry, Cleveland State University. Uh, Jeannie Hoover, longtime instructor from East Carolina University. Brian McGeary from Penn State University. Michael Whitchurch, longtime instructor from Brigham Young University. Nicole Williams from CUNY School of Medicine and Day Zhang from Renton Technical College. <clears throat> so those are our wonderful um, open ed advocates and instructors for this program. And um, I think you'll really, if you decide to apply and you get in, you will really enjoy working with them. Um, they are wonderful. Um, and I'm just so thankful that they are here uh, with us today, specifically, uh, Brian McGeary from Penn State University is going to talk to you today a little bit about what this uh, instructing for this program. And I think, Brian, you are an alumnus of it, but I could be wrong. Um, <clears throat> okay, yes. So if you could talk just a little bit about what instructing has meant to you. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I was in the uh, the original uh, first cohort of the program uh, all the way back in 2019. So it was pre-pandemic and there there were actually was like an in-person component of the program back then which we don't have anymore um but um at that particular time I was not at my my current institution I was at a small liberal arts college that didn't have any kind of established OER program or anything like that and OER was just like one of many other things that I that I was responsible for um so in that kind of a situation there's sort of a temptation to just want to like jump in and try to do something just to get things moving. Um, and I found that this program was really valuable for me in that context because it kind of forced me to uh, think systematically and actually put a plan into place and have um, sort of goals and ways of assessing those goals and, and so forth um, that was really valuable rather than just kind of jumping in and, and trying to do anything. Um, and um, one of the things that I've found valuable, both as when I was a participant in the program and now as an instructor in the program, is um, having that kind of learning community to, to learn from one another. I, I feel like as an instructor, I learn as much as I hope my, my cohort members are, are learning from me. And um, it's also, you know, a good place for everybody to kind of uh, miserate about whatever sorts of uh, challenges that, that you're facing. And um, and actually, when I was a, a participant in the program, one of my cohort members, I'm 
still working with today. I mean, we're at different institutions, but we're working on a federal grant program together. So, I mean, you you can make sorts of, uh, you know, connections that, that last well beyond the, the life of the program itself. Um, so I, I think that's another really valuable takeaway from it. Um, and um, yeah, I think, I think that's about all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brian. I had forgotten that you were part of the original cohort, so that's that's cool. Um, <clears throat> the next instructor who's going to speak is Jeannie Hoover. And Jeannie, where, are you an alumnus as well? I am not. You are I not. I was, though. <laughs> no, but ha were you one of the original instructors, or did you start after in that second, second or third year? Yep, I started in that second or third year. Back in our third year. Okay. Got it. Well, thank you for sharing with us today. Yeah, happy to. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jeannie Hoover, and I'm at East Carolina University, which is located in North Carolina. Um, so I've been an instructor, I think I'm going on my fourth year, and I've found it really wonderful. I, you know, I think Brian said it really well that one of the, uh, my favorite things is working with the cohort. Um, and having the opportunity to learn from others and to share information with everyone. I think sometimes OER work can be a little isolating. There's, you know, there might be one, maybe two people at an institution that work at it. Um, so it's really helpful to come together and share ideas and um, get advice from not only the instructors, but then also your cohort members as well. Um, so I find that very valuable. And I think the other thing that I um, think would be helpful to kind of know is that during the first session, when you're going through the course, we've really tried to make the assignments um, when you finish them to be able to apply them to your action plan so that when you're working on the action plan in the summer, you're not starting from scratch. You already have a really great base um, to pull information from. Um, so that is something that's really helpful, I think, um, as you're working on your action plan, because it can feel a little, little intimidating, but you've already done um, half the work already, so it's easy to pull it in. And I think, I think that's all I'll share. I'm excited to hear from um, the members of the cohorts that we have here today. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you both for sharing. Um, and as I've shared, <clears throat> Many of our instructors are from our, our alumni community, um, so we do like to hire uh, within because you know what it's all about. Um, and so with that said, uh, let's move to some alumni testimonials. Um, um, so thank you, um, alumni folks, for, for being here. The first person who's going to share is Abby Childs from Virginia Commonwealth University. Hi, thanks, Tanya. Um, yeah, so I was really excited to be able to kind of share some of my program experiences with you all. Um, it's been overall really fantastic, which I think is probably a theme um, that you might be picking up on, or if you haven't already, I'm sure you will by the end of today's session. But um, my kind of context going into this program is I was a brand new librarian. This is my first um, sort of professional level librarian role. Um, and I was also new to open ed. So this was a lot of, um, really, really helpful context to kind of ground me in the work that I was doing. So I started the program, um, gosh, I think it was maybe like one or two months after I started in my position. Um, and I think especially sort of from the content perspective of like that first part of the program where you're you're in the asynchronous course and you're learning about everything from like the history of the open education movement all the way up through like, um, you know, the various sort of subject areas and sort of best practices for things like assessment or outreach or advocacy, like all of that was incredibly helpful and in kind of laying a groundwork for like, um, sort of as I was getting up to speed in my position, also getting up to speed on like what's happening in the like broader open ed environment. Um, and how can I start to um, sort of take ownership of the program at my institution, but also um, get more embedded in the community. And I know, again, that's a theme that's come up so far. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but in addition to the, the big benefits just from like the content and the actual like learning experience, especially in the first part of the program, um, having those community connections has been super, super valuable, um, getting to know my cohort and instructor, um, and then kind of the, the 
ripple effect of like bumping into familiar familiar names and faces at other events and other um, trainings and things like that has been really nice. Um, as Jeannie mentioned, like I think these roles often can feel a little bit um, isolated or siloed where like you don't necessarily have a lot of other folks at your institution who are doing the same types of work. So kind of forging those connections outside of your institution through um, this program and, and frankly, a lot of the like OEN events have been really helpful in that way, um, I think helps uh, with um, sort of not feeling so alone and also feeling like you have someone to like compare notes with, um, to share your wins and your um, your struggles. I know Brian mentioned commiseration, which uh, the, the synchronous cohort meetups this summer, there's always time to share like what's gone well and like what are you struggling with, which is like a really helpful conversation to kind of have a space to share and also to hear what other folks are kind of grappling with um, and to compare notes and solutions. Um, so again, super valuable to someone, especially somebody um, new to um, open education librarianship. Um, really, really nice to have those opportunities. And then the last piece I wanted to highlight was just the accountability piece. Um, so I think especially like the first year of a role, I, I, somebody told me it feels like drinking from a from a fire hose, which I think is very true, where you're kind of taking in a lot of information and um, you have to make a lot of decisions and kind of figuring things out. Um, but having a structure to um, sort of be asked to step back and to do some intentional planning, um, to have the opportunity to like meet with my leadership um, sort of in a really intentional, like forward looking way um, to talk about like, what do we want this action plan to look like? Um, having those budget conversations, having you know a framework for planning, um, what outreach is gonna look like in particular, like the SMART goals um, section of the action plan has been really helpful because I think um, it's sometimes a little hard to like take that step back and, and to do the like really strategic, really thoughtful planning process. Um, and I know somebody else, I can't remember who it was, but somebody mentioned like how your your action plan activities um or your uh like module activities for the first part of the program really tie into that end product action plan um i you know in the final stages of, of wrapping up my action plan for this program um and i'm realizing how nicely it connects because like we're working on you know smart goals and um executive summary and like i was thinking back to the very first i think it was our very first module assignment that was like basically asked us to look at our institution strategic plan and the mission and vision and values and like how this work kind of connects. So there's just like, I think overall a really nice thoughtful setup for the program um, that really sets you up for success, um, not only in sort of working through the assignments, but then also creating this very um, workable, uh, relevant document at the end that I think um, I'm, I'm really grateful to have um, sort of looking ahead. Uh, to working on my program. And I think um, it's been a really valuable, like I said, a really valuable experience. Um, and yeah, I feel like I've gotten a, a lot out of it. I really can't speak highly enough about the program. So I'll stop there and let, um, let you hear from some other alums as well. Thank you, Abby, very much for all those helpful uh, insights. Uh, next, we're gonna welcome Lisa Pillow from here in Minnesota, Carleton College. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I don't know what more I can add, but because um, <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, I, I'm coming from a place um, where nobody has the formal role um, of working with open education. Um, and I think myself and a couple of my colleagues were in the in the position of we need to be doing something. This is very important, um, but where to start, how to start. Um, and maybe a lot of people have done this as well, but then, you know, you start attending webinars, you start attending conferences about OER, and it's so much information. It's inspiring, but overwhelming. Um, and you get to the point of, feeling, I don't know that I can possibly do this. Um, so I was very excited um, about the certificate program. Um, it, um, it has really helped, I think, in our situation, my situation in particular, um, of knowing that I can't just say to administration, we need to do this 
let's do something, but coming forward with a, a, a structured kind of um, action plan. Um, I've really enjoyed my time in the cohort. I think that's probably um, the biggest boost I've gotten from this program is um, working with my instructor who happens to be Jeannie and our cohort. Um, I think our monthly meetings with the cohort have been my favorite part of the program. Um, learning from my colleagues, um, being able to express to each other um, where we're having difficulties um, in our action plans, putting it together, um, but also learning from them because there are people in the cohort who do have actual programs in place, right? Um, but they're, they're improving upon them. Um, so that has been really wonderful. I think the pace of the program, um, I found the um, the first part, the asynchronous, um, it, was, it wasn't overwhelming with information. Um, and I, I think as Jeannie said, um, you, when you're going through those assignments, you're really, you're really preparing the building blocks for the action plan that you're, that you're going to be writing. So that's been very helpful. Um, I, do, I do think, again, just meeting with the cohorts, it kind of keeps you on track because when you get to the summer, right, you think I have so much time now to complete this action plan. And then you have your monthly meetings and you, and you kind of understand you're getting, you know, some ebbs and flows of how you're doing with your assignment. Um, so I would just encourage anybody who's thinking about it to just go ahead and, and take the dive um, and apply for the program. And I will add, I think the, um, the opportunity to um, participate in the Library Copyright Institute was also very helpful. Um, that's another one of those areas where I think you, I found this, but you attend a lot of webinars and meetings to, to try and, um, you know, improve your understanding of copyright. Um, and I found it to be really great because we actually had um, case scenarios um, where we would kind of work through. Um, so again, I just encourage anybody who may be on the fence to go ahead and just, just apply. Thank you so much, Lisa. <clears throat> I appreciate uh, that encouragement. Uh, the next alumnus is Christine Rickabaugh from the University of Arkansas, who's going to tell us a little bit about what uh, participation in the program meant for her. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, I froze. Okay, good deal. Um, I came with a slightly different background. I had actually been doing OER um, under another librarian when I was in Wisconsin. Um, so I didn't necessarily need the OER background. I needed the focus and the strategic planning piece. Um, one thing that I really appreciated as you're building this action plan throughout kind of the spring was then when it was time to actually write the rest of the plan, seeing how much had grown and changed just in that few months, how much more I'd learned about my institution, because um, I'm just at one year with them now. Um, and so really building, and it both gave me the courage to do some asks and, you know, reach out and talk to people, um, but also slowed me down so that I did things in really deliberate ways um, that just really kept things smooth and nice um, so that when I walked up to someone and said, hey, have you thought about doing this? I felt like I had the full toolkit and I'd really thought everything through. Um, so that I was considering all those different viewpoints because sometimes I get a little excited and I kind of go scattershot. And so this was a really nice focus. So for me, this was like taking my librarianship and my leadership to the next level in sort of how do I create direction for my program? Um, you know, what are some achievable goals? How will these goals impact the rest of my institution and university? And saying, oh, if we get this program to be fully OER, oh, how does that impact other people? And all of those different pieces, um, you know, all of a sudden going to a large institution where the land grant, you know, where the figurehead of the University of Arkansas, how do I do all of that? Um, and also, how do I energize this program? It's been kind of like floating along for a couple of years before I came up. And so 
kind of reactivating relationships and getting people going and some of that has been really helpful. Um, and yeah, I worked with Brian and he was just great with feedback and, oh, have you thought about this? And um, pointing us towards resources and articles and things about the goals we want to do was just really helpful. So I would say even if you know something about OER, this program still has a lot to teach you about the implementing and the strategic planning and some of that. And that's a big part of what I got. Thank you, Christine, <clears throat> for that perspective. Um, our final alumnus who has graciously uh, said that she would be here today to talk about her experience with the program is Megan Zara from the University of Texas at Arlington. All right, thank you so much for having me. I'm Megan Zara. Um, like Abby, I came in as a brand, brand new librarian. Um, my experience is in K-12 um, professional development. I was a middle school teacher and then I was a digital learning specialist for um, most of my career. So I taught teachers how to integrate technology in meaningful ways, which um, you know I didn't realize was me finding open and being open uh, with them being in the public school system, you have to find the cheap things. Um, so UTA actually recruited me and found me and kind of told me, hey, you're a librarian and we want you. Um, I came into an established program that's that's already doing a lot of really great work um, and some cost avoidance for students, um, but it the program did need kind of a, a refresh, uh, some different perspective. I think that um, one of the reasons they they hired me is my non OER, my different perspective. Um, so I had had a little bit of experience with OER as an adjunct professor, just using it to supplement for students in a very authentic way. Um, so I I was nervous that I wouldn't be accepted because I just didn't have much of a background and I was I was starting brand new. The program itself. I love the intentionality of the way the program was set up. Everyone has said pretty much everything that I would agree with the, the cohort and the, the intentionality of it all. Um, I like to focus a lot on the humanization that OER can, OER and open can bring. And I feel like this, this program in terms of my experience personally with my mental health, this program allowed me to be human and to grow as a librarian. Um, and to grow as an open education librarian. Um, and I really appreciate the flexibility and the space that um, you guys have given me to be able to be a part of the program, even though I went through some struggles. And I know that everybody um, had their own little struggles, but I, I really appreciated um, that that human piece that we were, were still seen as, as humans and not just part of a, a rigid program. Um, the the program has allowed me, first it allowed me to dig into my university and really figure out what, what OER is and then what they were doing. Um, it helped me with just vocabulary and definitions of what's already happening. And it gave me a blueprint for moving forward. So I, I appreciate it and definitely encourage anybody who with or without experience to, um, to join and try because I'm, I'm very happy with my action plan for my institution and I'm, I'm excited to um, see it through. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, every year I say, there's no way I could say everything that the alumni say and not nearly as articulately um, or think of all the things and you all have done such a great job. Um, and from such diverse perspectives, um, it, it's just really helpful to hear from you. So thank you so much for being with us and for being willing to share. Um, <clears throat> next, I'm gonna take questions and I invite um, any alumni or instructors to go ahead and unmute. Uh, your answers might be uh, more appropriate and more relevant than mine would be. So um, if you have questions, feel free to either unmute or type them in the chat, uh, whatever you prefer. Anyone have a question? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Katrina. Can you hear me? We can. Hey, um, I, I have one question and maybe another follow-up question. Um, because I'm kind of new to OER as well, I am the ZTC, the Zero Textbook Cost Coordinator for a, 
uh, Community College in California. And um, I really appreciate the perspective that we can dig into our own college and collaborate um, with our institution. Um, so that was one of my major questions is that, is this a isolated program? But this sounds like it's digging into um, how my institution would work. Um, my question is about the OEN library in particular. Are we, are we exploring other and all OER? Are we just looking at one particular um, like area of OEN libraries? You are absolutely not restricted to looking at only the open textbook library. Um, you will be actually, you'll have assignments where you'll be searching for OER from wherever it suits you. Um, so you are certainly not restricted to, to OEN, you know, curated or hosted resources in any way. Um, and to go back to what you said about um, the plan, I will say that um, our instructors are just, I've already said that they're wonderful and the alumni shared that as well, but they really want you to customize your action plan. So they will be flexible with you. If a piece doesn't match what your institution really does and it doesn't make sense for you, then we'll suggest you do something different. Um, so it, they really are, it, it really is for your institution, um, but we kind of give you a template of best practices to start with, and then you kind of take it where you want to go. Um, any, any other, did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. That helps a lot um, okay. because we, we are part of a consortium that has a pretty good OER library, but we're always looking to get better uh, materials depending on the course requirements. So that's great. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, Danielle puts in the chat, would it be beneficial, beneficial for more than one person from a library to attend at the same time? I think I will uh, let others answer that. W what do you all think? Have you experienced it? <clears throat> we do have occasionally teams of people, two or three people from the same institution. So um, anyone else want to take that question? I can I, take that. Oh, go uh, ahead, Brian. Go ahead, sure. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll start and then you can uh, add on. Uh, yeah, we've definitely had teams of people from the same institution, sometimes in the same years and sometimes in subsequent years. Uh, and uh, with the flexibility of the action plan, we give you the choice to collaborate on a joint action plan, or I've had a team of people where they wanted individual action plans focusing on their work areas. So one did an action plan from a liaison standpoint, and another did uh, an action plan from a student success standpoint, but they were all from the same institution. And uh, Tanya will, um, ask people from the same institution whether they want to be in the same cohort or in separate cohorts and we've had people do it both ways brian what were you gonna add um just the uh, speaking to like uh my particular institution we've had several people over the years um go through it and actually i think a couple of years ago we had two people going through it at the same time and as, as cheryl mentioned um they kind of scope their action plans differently to focus on sort of what what uh, pieces they are themselves working on in their um, sort of day to day role. Um, so maybe focusing on a particular campus that they're at or particular departments that they work with or what have you. So I think there's there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you do your action plan that can make it possible for for multiple people from the same institution to um, be getting something out of it, um, whether they're going through it at the same time or um, over the course of several years, different people from the same institution. Uh, the the folks that I had from different institution or from the same institution who did different years, um, the later person chose to build upon the initial action plan and update it based on everything that had been accomplished so far. Um, so, so that was a way to extend the action plan and update it with, um, with new targets and new information. So I, that was great to see. Um, I think one of the really valuable activities that we do in the, um, 
the Canvas part of the course is have people meet with their leadership. Um, and that gives a chance for everybody to get on the same page. We have a list of questions that we recommend asking, and uh, but you can certainly ask whatever questions you want. But we get great feedback on how valuable that exercise is to, to get everybody on the same page and ask leadership, you know, what would you like to see in an action plan? What are your priorities? Uh, so that's a helpful exercise if you have multiple institutional participants as well. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Brian, for answering that. <clears throat> Another question, is there a different program that co-applies with a non-library faculty member? Yes, that is called the Certificate in Open Pedagogy, uh, formerly labeled the Certificate in Open Educational Practices. Um, and we do have an information uh, session coming up. Let me see, I'm gonna have to check my calendar to figure out when that is. It's next week. Um, and it's Thursday, September 12th at noon central. Um, and I will be sharing the call for applications and the information about the uh, information session uh, soon, like as in today or tomorrow. Any other questions um, about the Certificate in Open Education Librarianship? How, how long after the course do we have access to the Canvas course? Two years is what I've been told institutionally. Two years. I wish we could retain it for longer, but there's something about that it's cluttering up the cloud or something. <clears throat> Any other questions? <clears throat> Katrina, adding on to that, there's also an open access version of the course curriculum. Uh, Anya published one last year. So that's openly available to anyone. Great, thank you. And Cheryl is updating the course this year. And so we will very likely be sharing out the public version as well. Again, just the updated version. <clears throat> Any other questions? You can unmute, throw it in the chat. Either one is great. I'm sorry, I'm Katrina again. Um, sorry to ask another follow-up question about the access and um, are the the not the access, the two different applications. Yes. Um, if I'm a librarian and I'm looking to collaborate with someone on my campus, um, would I do the library and then they would do the open ped and we can <laughs> work together? Or how does that how would what would you recommend if I'm looking to collaborate with somebody on my campus? That's not just, a librarian. Just so you know, if my answers don't seem very scripted, it's because uh, we are new. I am new to having to market both programs at once. And we, <laughs> we kind of knew that this would happen. Like we have to figure out a way to differentiate it. But um, in this program, the Certificate in Open Ed Librarianship is very much for librarians seek to make an impact on their campus through the range of open education. <clears throat> Uh, the focus of the other program, and so it's just for librarians, <clears throat> the focus of the other program <clears throat> is to take a piece of curriculum. <clears throat> it could be a lesson, it could be a unit, it could be mm. longer, and to pair up people, preferably from the same institution, but this year we will pair people up together. So it's for faculty to have uh, the knowledge and abilities and assistance um, from a knowledgeable librarian or faculty adjacent role could be an instructional designer to say, okay, through the power of open pedagogy or open educational practices more broadly, mm -hmm. I'm going to make this piece of curriculum much more student centered. So mm -hmm. it's not about the institution and what it's doing. It's very much about that faculty members classroom. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> but what we are doing, um, because we just think it's a good idea, is that if a librarian pays once, goes through it with a partner, they can go through it subsequent times <clears throat> at no cost to them with a paying faculty member. Hmm. Um, so we've had <clears throat> we've offered it twice <clears throat> uh, and we've gotten excellent feedback. So I'm really excited about it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was at that football game cheering <clears throat> and this is what I get. Um, 
But anyways, um, so very, I would say quite different <clears throat> goals in mind for each of the, uh, each of the programs. Does Thank that help? You. Yeah, that helps a lot. I see, and it does help the name change. I didn't understand open educational practices, mm -hmm. but I understand open ped. So but, I appreciate it. That's really immediate feedback for our yeah. name change. <laughs> so yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, any other questions about this program? Oh, and thank you, Cheryl, for, for sharing that. Uh, this, this is being recorded. And so a few of you joined late. If you feel like you missed something, <clears throat> we will share the recording on our website <clears throat> sometime this week. Uh, please feel free to continue to, to ask questions and Thank you to those instructors and alumni who have taken time out of their schedules to share. David, there is no synchronous component to the 10 week course. <clears throat> the only thing is that um, <clears throat> when we, uh, when the instructors start meeting synchronously once a month with their cohorts, they will attempt to meet everyone's needs. Usually they do it by some type of poll. Sometimes they actually have a meeting and they talk about when would be best. Um, so it's majority rules typically um, that, you know, the most people, there's eight in a cohort. Okay, six out of eight said this was the best time. Also, David, I wanna let you know that while we welcome people from across the globe, um, our curriculum is definitely has a North American perspective. Um, and so we just want to be really um, upfront about that. We have had people from across the globe join um, our program and I think, you know, have a good experience, but we do want to be upfront about that. Um, so any instructors, anything to add to that question or response? Let, let me just add that I had someone this year who is 12 hours, 12, 10 quite a few hours different than uh, my time zone and many of the others. Uh, and we did exactly that. We tried to find a time that worked for that person as well as everybody else. And the time that worked for us was 8 a.m. my time, which turned out to nine or 10 for the rest of the people in the cohort. For the most part, it worked really well. There were times when it didn't work something came up in her schedule uh, or just things didn't work because it was 12 hours because 8 a.m. for me was 8 a.m. for her. So it it can work. Um, it can be difficult to de depending on who's in the cohort and how easy it is to find a time when everybody can meet. David, did that address your, your concern? Yes, thank you. I'm satisfied. Okay. Uh, any final questions before we wrap up? Okay, then thank you so much for being with us today. And I hope to see your applications coming in. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them my way. Uh, thank you to instructors who showed up and the alumni who graciously uh, gave of their time today. So thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>